started when I was 13 or 14, but I didn't take it very seriously, and sadly have failed to take it very seriously ever since. Have you had any music lessons? No. Uh, so, so, oh yes, yeah, so I had music lessons in piano and violin, but I've never had any drum lessons. And I, again, I would recommend anyone who wants to play the drums to get some lessons. It was almost certainly something at the poly. It was probably... Um, uh, a version, uh, you know, probably contained it, Roger and myself, uh, and then a bunch of other guys from, from college at the time, uh, probably for, yeah, either for the college or for a friend's party from somewhere else. Well, funnily enough, architecture, I suppose, <laughs> because, <laughs> because I've got to. Uh, I, I mean, it'd be far too late to get back to it now. I mean, I'm still interested in building. I still enjoy the whole business of uh, buildings and, and um, uh, sort of from the design up and so on. But I could never, at this stage, start operating. I mean, apart from the technology, just the whole business of, of uh, running a job would be quite beautiful. I uh, love it, but it's a hobby. It's, uh, and, um, I would never, in a way, it would spoil it almost to, be, uh, to try and turn it into a profession. I'm not good enough to be a professional racer. I'm certainly not brave enough, and I'm not far too old and frightened. Uh, rents up cars for films and television primarily. So we're a sort of props company, really. And, um, they're, yeah, so people are making a commercial in particular. Commercials were our sort of speciality. Uh, but anything that involves particularly a bit of trick driving or racing cars, uh, sort of specialised, slightly specialised in terms of fast cars and fast driving rather than just any Morris Thousands and so on. They will do anything for money. My dad was made, for, he was a documentary filmmaker and made films about motor racing in particular, but he also made films about the history of the motor car, about flight. He worked for Shell uh, in the period when all these big companies had their own film units. And so uh, I was brought up in a motoring household. He used to race himself, and so I went to Silverstone when I was a small boy. Yes, I think so. Um, although it's a bit like asking about favourite children, you know, you don't want to upset the others. But uh, the Ferrari 250 GTO, probably, because um, it, you can do anything with it. It's a racing car, it has a history of racing, uh, you can rally it, you can drive it on the roads. Both my daughters went to church for their weddings in it. Um, and um, it makes me look really clever, because I bought it very... I didn't buy it cheaply, it was very expensive, but it's now value has escalated to the point where people think I'm really clever. The, the biggest influences by far were the, the drummers who were playing, you know, in, was, were the, the great drummers from that period, so the, the late 60s, Ginger Baker in particular, Mitch Mitchell, Keith Moon, uh, Blinky Davidson, who was a drummer in a band called The Nice. Um, I don't have a favourite decade, I really don't. I mean, I, I liked, uh, from the point of view of what we were doing, I, I enjoyed riding around the back of a transit as much as riding around in a Learjet, really. You know, to play. the thing is, it's a bit like motor racing. Actually, it's as much fun racing a, you know, Tachevaux Citroën as it is a, uh, you know, some rather elegant Porsche. Um, the big thing is about the activity, so playing music, whether you play it to 100 people or 50,000, it's not that different. It's a matter of uh, you know enjoying the, the whole thing of playing it. Full stop. And in terms of decay, uh, who else was playing at the time? Of course, 
that sort of 60s, early 70s period is, is important because that's the point at which you're being influenced so much and listening more passionately, I suppose. But I don't think there's a, you know, I think there's as much good music around now as there's ever been. Not really, I mean, they're all, yeah, they, they all have, I mean, they're sort of um, almost like a diary. That, they, they're a reminder of a period. So, different periods, different memories. Not, not sort of, uh, but you know, there's probably a dozen songs that I'd say that I would particularly like because, usually, because they're more fun to play. So they tend to be the songs that uh, have the, the most scope for uh, improvising, uh, improvisation. Again, it always comes back to that thing, the people who influenced you originally. So, uh, Cream, Hendrix, uh, I suppose probably there's some Hendrix songs and probably something like, um, that maybe had, has Bob Dylan lyrics, so you get the sort of, at least two for, two for one. Uh, my eldest daughter is a producer in music, music television in particular. So she's sort of the closest to being really engaged, engaged in it. The others have all got proper jobs, or, well, <laughs> or studying towards that. So it's been a journey, and I don't see it as a, it'd be terrible to look back and be going, oh, well, that was great, and ever since then it's been downhill. Oh, terrible.